today. Um, and thank you, Kathleen, for that uh, really great talk about Science Friday. So my name is Anna Seisling, and I'm the host of Great Lakes Now. I also manage engagement and partnership for the Great Lakes Now initiative. So if you're not from around here and you're wondering what is Great Lakes Now, well, it's a regional multimedia initiative housed at Detroit PBS. So what we do is we tell stories about the environment, the climate, and the water all throughout the Great Lakes region. It sounds like a big undertaking, and that's because it is. So it feels uh, really appropriate to be here talking about collaboration because that's really such a big part of what we do at Great Lakes now. Our engagement model is actually built, um, sort of built of dozens of uh, organizations that we partner with, everyone from higher ed institutions to other media outlets, of course, and then community-based organizations. And today I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the Great Lakes News Collaborative. We can go to the next slide, thanks. So um, the Great Lakes News Collaborative Back in 2021, the Charles Stewart Mott Foundation identified several organizations that were already doing environment and water-related reporting. And those organizations were, of course, Great Lakes Now, Michigan Public, formerly Michigan Public Radio, Bridge Michigan, and Circle of Blue. And the idea of collaborating in some way, in other words, kind of creating potentially something in terms of a package that was uh, greater than the sum of its parts was suggested. And that's kind of how the Great Lakes News Collaborative came into being. And then the Narwhal actually joined last year and they are a nonprofit news organization based in Canada, really centering climate issues uh, through a First Nations and a Canadian perspective. So now fast forward to 2022. Yay, we won the 2022 U.S. Water Prize, which was a real win. And I want to talk a little bit about some of what went into that project. So that particular year, and we've done a project every year now uh, with the GLNC, it was called Water's True Cost. And part of that project was taking into account that at that point, the Biden administration was pouring billions of dollars in federal funding into rescuing water systems across the country. Here in the Great Lakes region, I think we all like to think that we would be right at the cutting edge of a lot of this stuff as it relates to water being in the Great Lakes. In many ways we are, and yet there were still, there were still real, I think, glaring issues. Everything from aging water infrastructure to issues around affordability, equity, um, municipal funding strategies, and looking at the differences between uh, urban water issues, suburban, and rural. So what everyone did who was a member of the GLNC was sort of um, take a multifaceted approach Different organizations tackled this issue differently, and we ended up presenting something that, again, we were able to um, amplify the work that every individual partner was doing and push it out to all of our audiences under this umbrella project, Water's True Cost. Next slide. Thank you. So, um, you know, that's not to say though that there haven't been hardships. We're still definitely learning. And I would say that one of the challenges, um, some of you might be familiar with this if you are working with media organizations that have a different platform and format than yours. Um, but, you know, it's taking into account the fact that a long form investigative uh, web piece is going to have a sort of different sensibility than a monthly television segment or a radio story. So, it's about, I think, having regular communication having an open dialogue and staying flexible, being willing to think about um, how a story might be best told, and then allowing that person who maybe has you know, the, the radio station um, sort of at their fingertips to tell that particular story. And also to be thinking about the fact that there are different audiences as well. So some of these organizations are specifically focused on Michigan audiences. Others take a regional approach, like us. And then the Narwhal is uh, Canadian in terms of their audience. So it's thinking about sort of how to create, um, not necessarily force anybody out of their lane, but thinking about, all right, how is an organization telling stories about water issues in Michigan potentially going to tell a story that is illustrative of a larger regional problem? Um, so thinking about that kind of thing. And then um, we have another project coming up this year. Uh, it's going to be called The Checkup. We're examining the intersection of human health, climate change, and water. Um, so stay tuned tuned for that. Everything's over at greatlakesnow.org. Uh, and I just want to say, too, the other thing that I feel like all of us are sort of moving toward within the GLNC, and it's an interesting thing, is thinking about 
we have these five partners, how can we better incorporate our sixth partner being our audience? And to do that, that's really where um, my position thinking about engagement and partnership, I'm trying to create virtual events and other opportunities for us to actually um, present the reporting, the finding for these projects, and then give our audience um, an opportunity to get involved and ask questions and sort of dictate in some ways um, the nuances and um, direction of future projects. So, greatlakesnow.org is the place to learn more about the Great Lakes News Collaborative, and I would also urge you to subscribe to our newsletter while you're there.